the WNBA is on ION. Every Friday, we shine a light on the brightest stars in the game. Bullseye, baby. Let's talk about the Chicago Sky and Angel Reese. Women's basketball isn't just about one player. It's about others, like Angel Reese. I think Angel will eventually be a good pro. I don't think Angel will come into the league immediately and dominate the way people think she will. But when it comes to competition, it's clear that Rookie of the Year belongs to Caitlin Clark. My WNBA Player of the Week. Surprise, surprise. Indiana Fever with the sensation. Caitlin Clark. Clark is smashing records, leading her team, and making Angel Reese look like she's playing in slow motion. There's major drama in the WNBA right now. Never, till today, <laughs> I've still not watched a WNBA game. Angel Reese has been facing rejection on multiple fronts. Announcement out of Chicago, Angel Reese's rookie season is over. She took to social media to announce that, unfortunately, she suffered a season-ending injury what a year. I would have never imagined the last bucket of my rookie season would be a three, but maybe that was God saying, give them a taste of what they will be seeing more of in year two. Now, following this announcement, Chicago would later release a statement. First coach Cheryl Reeves snubbed her at the draft. Now, Caitlin Clark is making Reese's game look weak. Even Angel's plan to recruit French star Gabby Williams completely backfired. Gabby, obviously, I've been a fan of Gabby since she was at UConn, and I've always tried to take some things from her game. She plays hard, um, and I love that about her. Um, it was tough to see, obviously, see her lose and obviously to see her play, but I love Gabby, and it was just a, it was just a joke. She did play here in Chicago. I love her. The question is, is Angel Reese's obsession with Caitlin Clark sinking her game? The tension between Angel and Caitlin came to a head in a recent matchup. Clark gets fouled, and Angel's reaction shows her frustration. Go, 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 go! Clark! Hammer! Three Sky players. The F2 definition would be unnecessary and excessive. Despite her college championship title, Caitlin's still the one pulling the attention. The audience is just more excited to watch Caitlin play, and it's obvious why. Clark's performance on the court is on another level compared to Angel. Caitlin Clark, on the other hand, stays composed. When she gets fouled, she doesn't make a scene. Instead, she says, I just need to make these two free throws. Her calm, collected demeanor is in stark contrast to Angel, who constantly plays the victim. It's simple. Caitlin takes responsibility, and it shows in her gameplay. She's leading her team to the playoffs for the first time since 2016. Some people are even talking about the possibility of co-rookies of the year. Kevin Clark's first month in the WNBA has been eventful to say the least. It's also been productive. Today, Clark was named the WNBA's Rookie of the Month for May. But let's be real, there's no comparison. Caitlin Clark is dominating in every statistical category except rebounds. Angel Reese may have a streak of double-doubles, but Caitlin's impact on her team in the league is undeniable. She's not just putting up numbers, she's turning the Indiana Fever into a playoff team. He just broke the all-time single-season record for rebounding as a rookie. Yeah, she just and Caitlin's on pace to break the all the, the single season record for assist as a rookie. She already broke it. While Angel's Sky team is floundering. When it comes to being a team player, Clark makes it about us, while Angel makes it about me. Every time you hear Caitlin speak, it's about how her teammates make her better. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it was good for me. I think I got here on Monday or Tuesday. Of on the flip side, Angel's always the center of attention, but not in a good way. Her fashion, her attitude, it's all, look at me. It's no surprise her team isn't thriving. The Fever, however, are headed to the playoffs, and it's all because of Caitlin Clark. The debate around Rookie of the Year should already be over. Caitlin Clark has outperformed Angel Reese all season long. Long. Clark is a game-changing player, and the stats back it up. She's leading in points and assists by a wide margin, while Angel's shooting percentage is dragging her down. Caitlin has single-handedly raised the profile of the WNBA, drawing millions of viewers and putting the league in the spotlight. Keep her teammates involved, and then also just her growth. Um, it's, been, it's been great. Recently, Lisa Leslie made waves by suggesting that the Rookie of the Year award should be shared between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. But the reality is, this is is a terrible take. Clark has carried the fever to new heights, while Angel's game has remained inconsistent. Leslie's comments sparked outrage, with many fans and analysts pointing out that it's clear Caitlin deserves the award based on performance alone. Angel Reese had a great college career, but the WNBA is a different ball game. I think so many people are watching women's basketball right now. Yeah. It all started from the national championship game, and I've been dealing with this for two years now. 
and understanding like, yeah, negative things have probably been said about me, but honestly, I'll take that because look where women's basketball is. People are talking about women's basketball, but you never would think that we'd be talking about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games. We got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas, like just because of one single game. Caitlin Clark is dominating at a level Angel can't match. And the more Angel attaches herself to Clark, the worse it's going to get. Her obsession with keeping up with Caitlin is destroying her game. Let's be honest, Angel Reese's performance is solid, but she's inflating her rebound stats by missing her own shots. Caitlin Clark, on the other hand, is redefining what it means to be a rookie in the WNBA. She's not just excelling individually, she's elevating her entire team. The Indiana Fever's rise is directly tied to Clark's leadership and playmaking. Even LeBron James has taken notice. Tweeting his support for Clark, she's becoming a household name, and rightfully so. Despite all the noise from her critics, Caitlin Clark continues to let her game do the talking. She's the reason people are tuning in to watch the WNBA, and the league knows it. Without Caitlin, none of this buzz exists. Meanwhile, Angel Reese is struggling to maintain relevance. Her game hasn't evolved, and her focus on personal glory is hurting both her and her team. People were excited to see what she'd do after her college success, but now it's clear that Caitlin Clark is in a league of her own. Angel's fixation on Clark is holding her back. Jason Whitlock nailed it when he said the comparison between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese is laughable. How dare Jason compare Angel Reese to Caitlin Clark? But I'm going to do it. The exact same person in victory and in loss. Clark is a transcendent talent, changing the WNBA as we know it, while Reese is just trying to keep up. Clark's impact on the game is monumental while Reese's game hasn't been enough to lift her team out of mediocrity. Caitlin Clark is on her way to becoming one of the greatest rookies in WNBA history. Caitlin Clark is clearly the most valuable player in the history of the WNBA. She's clearly the best rookie the WNBA has ever seen. She's leading in every major category, from points to assists, and is dragging her team to the playoffs. Angel Reese, meanwhile, is caught up in the hype without delivering results. Her Rookie of the Year campaign is sinking, and it's all because she can't keep her focus on her own game. At the end of the day, Caitlin Clark is the clear Rookie of the Year. She's changing the game, inspiring fans and leading her team to success. Angel Reese might be good, but she's no match for what Caitlin is doing this season. The voters have a tough decision, but the facts don't lie. Caitlin Clark deserves this award, hands down. Caitlin Clark is the future of the WNBA, and her dominance is undeniable. She's putting up historic numbers and leading her team with poise and maturity. Meanwhile, Angel Reese is struggling to find her footing in the league. Caitlin's impact goes beyond the court. She's bringing attention to the WNBA in ways that no one else has. Angel's focus on Caitlin is only making things worse for her, and it's clear that she's losing the Rookie of the Year race by a mile. So what do you think? Is Angel Reese's obsession with Caitlin Clark hurting her game, or is she just in a rough patch? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're here for all the latest WNBA drama and breakdowns, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Stay tuned and stay fired up. You know, this game's gonna be chippy from the beginning. I don't know what they're doing or what they've been doing or what's going on. It doesn't matter to us. We keep doing what we're doing. Come on. Come on. 31 points, 12 assists, one unforgettable night. Caitlin Clark just rewrote the WNBA rookie playbook. In a high-stakes showdown against Angel Reese, Clark didn't just win, she dominated. But the big question remains, is the WNBA rookie of the year race already over? Buckle up, WNBA fans, because we're breaking down a game that will be talked about for years to come. Let's set the scene. Indiana Fever versus Chicago Sky. Two teams, two standout rookies, one epic showdown. What was supposed to be a close battle turned into the Caitlin Clark show, a performance that has everyone asking if this is the defining moment in the 2024 WNBA season. From the moment Caitlin Clark stepped onto the court, you could feel the intensity. This wasn't just another game, it was a statement. Her posture, her focus, everything screamed, this is my house now, and boy did she prove it. Let's break down the numbers, because they're nothing short of spectacular. Clark finished with 31 points, 12 assists, and 4 rebounds. But here's the kicker. She did it all in just three quarters. That's right. Caitlin Clark was already on the bench with three minutes left in the fourth, the game well in hand. Now let's talk about those 12 assists. This isn't just about scoring. It's about Caitlin Clark's next-level vision on the court. She's not just playing the game. 
she's conducting a symphony. Each pass, each play, perfectly timed and executed. Clark is redefining the point guard position in the WNBA, showing why she's a game changer for the Indiana Fever. But it's not just the quantity of her stats, it's the quality. Caitlin Clark shot five for eight from beyond the arc. We're talking long range bombs that had even Chicago Sky fans rising from their seats. One shot from way beyond the three point line was pure magic. It wasn't just a basket, it was a statement. A statement that Caitlin Clark is here to change the WNBA forever. Now let's address the elephant in the room, Angel Reese. This game was hyped as Clark versus Reese, the battle of the WNBA's super rookies, but it turned into a one-woman show. While Clark was lighting up the scoreboard, Reese struggled. She finished with just 10 points and 11 rebounds. In this head-to-head -head matchup, it wasn't even close. But here's where it gets really interesting. Caitlin Clark's impact goes way beyond her personal stats. Let's talk about the Indiana Fever. Last season, they were the league's punching bag, finishing with a dismal 13-27 record. Now, they're playoff contenders, and a lot of that is thanks to Caitlin Clark's leadership and on-court brilliance. The final score, 181, a blowout. By the end of the third quarter, with Clark already on the bench, the Fever were up 98-74. This wasn't just a win, it was a statement to the entire WNBA. The Indiana Fever are here, and Caitlin Clark is leading the charge. But it's not just about one game. Caitlin Clark is transforming this franchise. Her teammates are playing better. Aaliyah Boston, for example, is thriving with Clark's pinpoint passes. The chemistry is electric, and it's giving opposing defenses nightmares. The Fever have gone from a rebuilding team to a legitimate playoff threat, all thanks to their rookie sensation. And let's talk about that Caitlin Clark confidence. It's contagious. You can see it in how the whole team plays. They believe they can beat anyone any night. That champion mentality, it's crucial for a young team looking to make noise in the playoffs. But success comes with a price. Late in the game, with the Fever comfortably ahead, we saw the ugly side of frustration. Caitlin Clark was pushed from behind during a transition play. She fell hard, causing a moment of concern for every WNBA fan watching. This incident speaks volumes. Caitlin Clark isn't just winning games. She's getting into her opponent's heads. The Chicago Sky, a respected team with their own stars, resorted to desperate tactics. It's the kind of impact we usually see from seasoned veterans, not rookies in their first WNBA season. But Caitlin Clark? She got up, dusted herself off, and walked back to the bench with a smile. That smile said it all. You can knock me down, but you can't stop me. This is the kind of resilience that defines superstars in the WNBA. Now let's zoom out for a second. This performance isn't just about one game or even one season. We're watching the birth of a WNBA superstar. Kaylin Clark is redefining what's possible for a rookie. She's not just playing well. She's changing the game and raising the bar for the entire WNBA. And it's not just Caitlin Clark who's evolving. Let's talk about Coach Christy Sides. At the start of the season, many questioned if Sides could maximize Clark's potential. Well, those doubts are fading fast. Sides has rebuilt the Indiana Fever's offense around Caitlin Clark's unique skills. The result? A fluid, unpredictable attack that left the Chicago Sky defense scrambling. Sides isn't just letting Clark shine, she's building a cohesive, dangerous team around her star. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. While this game feels like a coronation for Caitlin Clark, it's important to remember we're still early in the season. There's a lot of basketball left to play. That said, it's hard to imagine anyone catching Clark in the WNBA Rookie of the Year race after this performance. She's not just putting up numbers, she's changing the narrative around her team and the league. And here's an exciting thought. This might just be the beginning of an epic rivalry. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, two of the most talented and charismatic players to enter the WNBA in years, already have history from their college days. Now that rivalry has been transported to the biggest stage in women's basketball. Yes, Caitlin Clark dominated this matchup, but Angel Reese is a fierce competitor. You can bet she's going to use this defeat as fuel. She'll go back to training, work even harder, and come back with everything next season. And Clark, 
Well, she just set a new standard for herself. Now the pressure's on to maintain this level of play. Can she continue to dominate like this? Or will Reese and other rising stars find a way to contain her? Imagine future matchups between these two. Every Indiana Fever versus Chicago Sky game will be must-watch TV. Comparisons will be inevitable. Statistics will be scrutinized. And fans on both sides will passionately defend their favorite player. But beyond the numbers and the rivalries, let's appreciate what we're witnessing. Caitlin Clark's performance isn't just changing games. It's changing the WNBA. She's bringing new fans to the league, filling arenas, and creating buzz we haven't seen in years. This is the kind of star power that can elevate an entire sport. Young girls watching Caitlin Clark aren't just seeing a great player. They're seeing what's possible. They're seeing a woman dominate on the biggest stage, playing with a joy and confidence that's infectious. And let's be clear, this isn't just good for the Indiana Fever or for Caitlin Clark herself. It's good for the entire WNBA. Rising tides lift all boats, and Caitlin Clark is creating a tidal wave of interest in women's basketball. As the dust settles on Caitlin Clark's historic night, one thing is clear. The WNBA will never be the same. We're not just watching a great rookie season. We're witnessing the birth of a superstar. The rookie of the year race, it might be over. But Caitlin Clark's impact on the league, that's just beginning. Buckle up, WNBA fans. The Caitlin Clark era is here, and it's going to be one hell of a ride. How much more experience that gives you over other players coming in, right? So people say, dang, like he or she's killing them. But you have a 25-year-old playing against a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. Like, you, sh you should be killing them. Yeah because you've been doing it a lot longer than they have. Clark right now probably takes about 40 shots a game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> Cheryl Swoops has been stirring up controversy in the WNBA, particularly with her critical comments about rising superstar Caitlin Clark. This season, Swoops has made no secret of her jealousy, but her latest actions have taken things to a whole new level. ESPN, the network that's been closely following Caitlin Clark's meteoric rise, has highlighted her impact on the WNBA numerous times, making Swoop's criticism even more surprising. Diamond DeShields recently made headlines in WNBA news for an aggressive play against Caitlin Clark, sparking intense debate among WNBA fans. Imagine this. DeShields intercepts Clark at half court during a key Indiana Fever game, not with just any foul, but with a clear, frustration-driven play. The fallout from this incident was immediate, with WNBA analysts and fans calling it out as a dirty play. Against Caitlin Clark, it wasn't okay. It was a flagrant foul. Yeah. Igniting a firestorm of controversy. The aftermath of Diamond DeShields' actions didn't stop at just criticism. DeShields faced a barrage of backlash, including receiving racist threats. Uh, Diamond DeShield received racist threats after Caitlin Clark for a flagrant foul. Which highlighted ongoing issues within the WNBA community. But amid this storm, Cheryl Swoops stood out as a vocal supporter of DeShields, continuing her narrative against Caitlin Clark. Swoops tweeted, Head up, kid. Hate will not win. You are covered, and there's nothing these evil people can do about that. All love for you. This tweet, while supportive of DeShields, had significant consequences for Swoops, leading to her removal from the WNBA broadcast team for the highly anticipated Fever versus Dallas Wings game, a pivotal WNBA matchup. When questioned by WNBA fans who were eager to hear her commentary, Swoops didn't hold back, responding with the now famous phrase, not today, Satan. But let's be honest, supporting WNBA players who engage in potentially dangerous, career-threatening actions isn't a good look for a WNBA legend like Swoops. This incident isn't isolated. It's just the latest in a series of actions that suggest jealousy and resentment towards Caitlin Clark, one of the most talked about players in women's basketball today. Stephen A. Smith, a well-known sports commentator frequently featured on ESPN, has consistently defended Caitlin Clark and this time was no different. Smith didn't hesitate to call out Cheryl Swoops for her biased and baseless criticism of Clark. No, 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 Caitlin Clark, no Caitlin Clark. Respectfully, Cheryl Swoops, you have any idea how that makes you look?
You have any idea how that serves to stain any kind of critique of Caitlin Clark? The Caitlin Clark effect isn't just a buzzword. It's a real phenomenon in women's basketball, driving WNBA viewership and attendance to new heights. Caitlin Clark is redefining the game every time she steps onto the court, breaking WNBA records and setting new standards for what's possible in women's sports. But with greatness comes envy, and Swoops' actions seem to reflect the challenges that come with being a trailblazer like Caitlin Clark. The tension between Cheryl Swoops and Caitlin Clark goes back to Clark's college basketball days. Swoops openly questioned whether Clark's skills would translate to the WNBA, even suggesting that Angel Reese's game was better suited for professional play. Swoops confidently predicted that Clark wouldn't dominate the WNBA immediately. Like, no, nah, it's not gonna be that easy. So will Caitlin Clark be a good pro? Absolutely. Will Caitlin Clark come into the WNBA and do what she's doing right now? Immediately? Absolutely not. Not gonna happen. Okay. But as we've seen, Caitlin Clark has exceeded all expectations, proving her doubters wrong at every turn. But Swoops didn't stop at questioning Clark's abilities. She also criticized Clark's NCRA scoring record, dismissing it as a result of volume shooting rather than skill. Going to break a record, to me, if it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player set it. Okay. So if, if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, and then there's another year, you know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year to break that record. So is it truly a broken record? Yeah, that'll go in the record books as Caitlin Clark is the all-time, whatever it is. I don't even know what the number is, but that's the way it'll be. And, and I don't think it should be. However, Swoops got several key facts wrong. She claimed that Caitlin Clark took advantage of an extra year of eligibility due to COVID-19, playing five years of college basketball. In reality, Clark played the standard four years, just like Kelsey Plum, the previous record holder. What's more, Caitlin broke the record in fewer games, showing that it wasn't just about taking more shots, but making them count. Swoops also exaggerated by stating that Caitlin Clark takes 40 shots per game, when in truth, Clark's average is closer to 19 shots per game. And perhaps the most glaring mistake, Swoops claimed that Caitlin is 25 years old when she's actually just 22. How much more experience that gives you over other players coming in, right? So people say, dang, like he or she's killing them, but you have a 25-year-old playing against a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. Like, you, sh you should be killing them. Because yeah. you've been doing it a lot longer than they have. Clark right now probably takes about 40 shots a game. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Here we> go. <laughs> <laughs> These inaccuracies have led many WNBA fans and analysts to question whether Swoops' criticism is based on facts or personal bias. What Cheryl Swoops fails to acknowledge is the monumental impact Caitlin Clark is having on women's basketball and the WNBA as a whole. Caitlin Clark is bringing more attention to the WNBA than ever before, inspiring a new generation of young female athletes and drawing in a wider audience to the league. Instead of uplifting the next generation of WNBA players, Swoops seems intent on undermining their success. But this isn't just about Caitlin. It's about the future of the WNBA. Supporting Caitlin Clark means supporting the growth and evolution of women's basketball. Despite the backlash, Cheryl Swoops eventually issued an apology, though many found it less than sincere. She defensively stated that black people can't be racist, a comment that did little to mend the situation. I, I'm gonna say this, and then I wanna like be done with this whole conversation. So for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, like first of all, black people can't be racist. Meanwhile, Caitlin Clark continues to break records in her rookie WNBA season, solidifying her place in the history of the WNBA. From holding the WNBA single game assist record to becoming the youngest player to achieve consecutive double doubles in points and assists, Caitlin's accomplishments are rewriting the WNBA record books. Yet Cheryl Swoops seems determined to ignore these achievements. It's becoming clear that this isn't just a case of casual criticism. It's starting to look like a personal vendetta, and people are taking notice. Even Stephen A. Smith, known for his outspoken views on ESPN, couldn't stay silent. 
He publicly criticized Swoops for her blatant bias against Clark. Clark and the Fever currently lead the WNBA in average game attendance and per game TV viewership. But despite the attendance and viewership records, there seems to be some haterade in the league in regards to Clark starting with WNBA legend Cheryl Swoops herself. The statistics don't lie. Caitlin Clark is leading the Indiana Fever to new heights with the team boasting the highest average game attendance and TV viewership in the WNBA. And yet, Swoops refuses to give Caitlin the credit she deserves. Instead, Cheryl Swoops continues to praise other Fever players like Lexi Hall, Kelsey Mitchell, and Aaliyah Boston, while conspicuously leaving Caitlin Clark out of the conversation. This Indiana team, I'm gonna say shout out to Lexi Hall. I'm a big Lexi Hall fan. Absolutely. Watch her in AU. Lexi Hall shot the leather off the ball in their game against Seattle and just couldn't miss. Kelsey Mitchell is just broken. She is just shooting the basketball. Aaliyah Boston, almost a triple-double. This omission is becoming increasingly difficult for WNBA fans to ignore, especially as Caitlin continues to set new records and drive the success of the Indiana Fever. Swoops' refusal to acknowledge Clark's contributions is not only petty, but also damaging to her own reputation as a WNBA legend. And the criticism doesn't end there. Swoops went as far as to suggest that Caitlin's success is due to having better teammates at the Fever compared to Angel Reese's situation at the Chicago Sky. With Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese locked in a tight race for WNBA Rookie of the Year, Swoops' dismissal of Clark's talent is almost laughable. So, what's next in this unfolding drama? As Caitlin Clark continues to rise in the WNBA, will the league and its legends like Cheryl Swoops finally give her the recognition she deserves? Or will a shadow of jealousy continue to loom over her achievements? One thing is certain, this story is far from over.